Thank you so much for joining us for the webinar, Ranked Choice Voting, What You Need to Know. My name is Elizabeth Aloni and I'm with Schneps Media. Schneps Media is the largest local media company in the New York metro area. We publish over 70 newspapers, magazines, websites, webinars, podcasts, and events throughout Queens, the Bronx, Brooklyn, Manhattan, Westchester, Long Island, and Philadelphia. Today, we're pleased to give you all the information you need to know on ranked choice voting to ensure you're ready to vote in the upcoming election. And we are very happy to have us with, with us tonight, the expert on ranked choice voting, Ali Swatek. Ali is the Director of Policy and Research at the New York City Campaign Finance Board, where she helps New Yorkers better understand how campaigns are funded and how voters participate in our democracy. Welcome, Ali. Hi, thank you so much. I'm really excited to join you. Wonderful. I'm so excited for you to share with us everything we need to know about ranked choice voting because a lot of people do feel confused and unsure and voting is such a critical thing for, for citizens to participate in. We want to make sure everyone feels comfortable and knows exactly what they need to do. So Ali, please share with us all of your knowledge. We are open to you. Happy to do so. Um, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I know the weather is not that great outside. So if you hear any thunder, I apologize. Um, or the air conditioning that's been running all day. <laughs> um, I'm sure you have the same situation in your house. Um, let us know if you still can't hear us. I saw in the chat that someone was having difficulty. So um, I'll try and speak a little louder. <laughs> I'm going to share my presentation with you all and get started. So we've been doing a lot of these trainings over the last uh, couple of weeks, but for those of you who uh, aren't familiar with the Campaign Finance Board, um, we administer the New York City Public Matching Funds Program, but we also educate voters through our NYC Votes Initiative. So New York City Campaign Finance Board, NYC Votes, those are the same thing, uh, and that's a little confusing to folks, so I just wanted to make sure everyone knows about that. Um, and then lastly, we're also in charge of educating every New Yorker about ring choice voting. So that's why I'm here talking to you today. Um, we have a really exciting municipal election coming up this year. Um, the primary election is taking place in June. The general election is taking place in November. But for this training, I'm going to primarily be talking about the primary election, um, not only because that's coming up literally in a matter of days. You can start early voting this Saturday, June 12th. Um, but this is also the election that we're going to be using ranked choice voting. And for most of you, you're going to be using it for the first time. So you'll hear me repeat these dates a lot. I want everyone to remember that early voting is from June 12th to the 20th and election day is on June 22nd. So this year you will be voting to elect many new elected officials. Um, on your ballot, you'll see city offices for mayor, comptroller, public advocate, borough president and city council. Um, and depending on where you live, you may also see other offices on your ballot. So district attorney, district leader, judges, judicial convention delegates. Um, there's a lot of things that we're voting on this year and there are a lot of candidates running. Um, of course, that's really exciting. We get to elect a new mayor. We get to elect uh, a mostly new city council. So why are voting, why is voting in local elections so important? Um, I think we've seen this all through the last year. Local leaders impact our lives every day. They make decisions on policy issues that are really important to us. Um, healthcare and COVID-19 relief, I think we saw the importance of that over the last year. Police and criminal justice reform and racial justice as well. And then of course, affordable housing and education, those two issues that are always really important to New Yorkers and is always, they're always cited as the most important concerns uh, for folks who are turning out to vote. And of course, elected officials in New York City are the ones that are making decisions on those issues that impact your lives. So you want to you want to make sure you turn out so that you can tell them what you think and what issues you think are most important to you. OK, so we're here to talk about ring choice voting, and I'm going to play a really short video for you all. It's going to cover the basics of ranked choice voting. It's two minutes long, and it also has closed captions for those of you uh, who are not able to see the video. So why are we using ranked choice voting? How can you correctly mark your ballot and cast your ballot? How are winners decided? And the reasons that you may want to rank candidates. And then, of course, I will follow up with some 
ed voter education deadlines so that you remember when you can vote too. After this video, I'm just going to reemphasize a number of the most important points to make sure that everybody gets it. There's different ways of learning, and so we're going to explain it in two different ways today. There's a new way for New Yorkers to have their say in city elections, a way that gives voters more choices and can lead to more diverse winners. It's called ranked choice voting. 74% of New York voters chose to use it in primary and special elections for city offices, mayor, public advocate, comptroller, borough president, and city council. You won't see ranked choice voting in general elections or elections for state or national offices. But in ranked choice voting elections, you can now rank up to five of your favorite candidates for each office. Here's how ranked choice voting works. On your ballot, you'll see candidates listed in rows and numbered rankings and columns. Pick your first choice and completely fill in the oval next to their name under the first column. Like always, you can just vote for your one favorite candidate and submit your ballot. But you might like several people. If you have a second choice, fill in the oval next to their name under the second column. Do the same thing for your third, fourth, and fifth choices if you have them. A few don'ts. Don't rank the same candidate more than once. It won't help them, and it takes away your chance to rank the others who are running. Don't give the same rank to multiple candidates. It could disqualify your ballot. Don't worry. This is a new process, and you can always ask a poll worker for help or for a new ballot if you make a mistake. So, how do ballots get counted with ranked choice voting? If one candidate gets more than 50% of everyone's first choice votes, they win the election right away. That's it. If no candidate gets more than 50%, ballots will be counted in rounds. Round by round, the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated. So, if your top-rated candidate is eliminated, your vote goes to your next highest choice. This keeps going until only two candidates remain. The person with the most votes wins. Ranked choice voting is already popular in many cities around the country because voters find that it helps more voices be heard. Now it's our turn. Get answers to your questions and learn more at nyccfb. All right, I stopped that a little bit early. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, but we love this video. I think it does a great job of explaining the basics of ranked choice voting. Um, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail now. Um, for anybody who's confused, of course, if you still have questions, please type it into the Q&A box. Dot info. Oops. There we go. Um, so what is ranked choice voting? You saw in this video, um, it's pretty simple to explain. Ranked choice voting is a new way for voters to elect their representatives. Voters can rank up to five candidates in order of preference instead of choosing just one. And this gives voters more say in who wins. It can encourage candidates to talk about issues that matter to your community, and it can lead to more diverse candidates winning those elections as well. And I'm not just making that up. Um, it's what's been shown in research in the places that already use ranked choice voting. And there are a bunch of places that use ranked choice voting, including 17 U.S. cities. Uh, San Francisco, Minneapolis, and Santa Fe use ranked choice voting. So we're not the first ones, even though we're the largest to use ranked choice voting for sure. Um, the whole state of Maine uses ranked choice voting and Alaska. So those are two pretty small population states. We're still larger than them. Um, but the Academy Awards also uses ranked choice voting to select their best picture winner. Um, not a lot of people know that. So it's used in a bunch of different places. How did we end up deciding to use ranked choice voting in New York City? Um, so short answer is New York City voters chose to use it in November 2019. 74% of voters voted yes on ballot question one to establish ring choice voting in some local elections. So it's important to know that this reform was approved by voters and we're using it for the first time this year. All right, like I said, we're using it for the first time this year because it's effective January 1st, 2021. Um, so most of you may not have used ring choice voting, but we've already used it in four special elections for city council actually that took place in February and March. So it's going to be used only in special and primary elections for city office. We are not gonna be using it in the November general election. And when I say city office, I mean the offices of mayor, 
public advocate, comptroller, borough president, and city council, so those five city offices. We won't be using ranked choice voting for federal or state races like president or for Congress or for governor. Um, and we also won't be using it to elect local races like district attorney or judgeships. So that last part is important to know. If you remember at the beginning of my presentation, I told you you'd also be voting on district attorneys or judgeships depending on where you live. In some cases, you're gonna have ranked choice voting elections on your ballot and single choice elections. So that's just something for folks to be aware of. It's gonna appear on a second ballot page, which I will tell you a little bit more about later. How do you fill out a ballot? So the video goes into detail about this, but it's very simple. You pick your first choice candidate and completely fill in the oval next to their name under the first column. If you have a second choice candidate, you fill in the oval next to their name under the second column. If you have a third choice, you fill in the oval next to their name in the third column. I think you see where I'm going with this. So you do the same for your fourth and fifth choices in their respective columns. The candidates are going to be listed in rows and your choices will be shown at the top of the column. So it'll say first choice, second choice, third choice, fourth choice, fifth choice. And it's basically set up like a grid. If you've ever done a, a standardized test, you know, you have to fill in the bubbles. That's the same idea here. You can rank up to five candidates or as many are running in that election. Um, but you can also just vote for one if you want to or two if you want. It's up to you. The word choice is in the title, ranked choice voting. It's ultimately your choice, how many candidates you rank. Um, it's up to the voter. So one piece of information that I really want everyone to take away from this training is how not to mark your ballot. You want to know how to mark your ballot correctly. So this is the key ballot marking error that we uh, are worried about. And this is when a voter gives multiple candidates the same rank. It's called overvoting. So you can see in this sample ballot here, the uh, voter has marked candidate B and candidate C as their first choice. Um, if you do this, it's not clear who you intended to vote for. So it can invalidate your ballot. If you're voting in person, you, uh, you'll actually feed the ballot into the scanner and it will tell you that you did something wrong. So that's good. Um, but if you're voting by absentee, you don't get to feed your ballot into the scanner. An election worker does that for you. So uh, this is something to particularly be aware of as an absentee voter. Um, you want to mark one candidate for each of your choices. Do not mark two, don't mark three, just one. The second ballot marking error is called duplicate ranking. And this is when a voter uh, ranks a candidate more than once. And you can see in this sample, uh, the voter chose candidate B as their first, second, third, fourth, and fifth choice. Um, this is the same as just voting for candidate B as your first choice. They don't get any extra credit points for being marked for every choice on your ballot. And uh, you don't get the full benefits of being able to rank other candidates for your other rankings. Um, this does not invalidate your ballot. If you wanna just vote for one candidate, you can. Like we saw in the video, you fill in the oval next to the candidate's name in the first column and you leave columns two through five blank. That is okay. However, we do wanna encourage folks to consider ranking other candidates because as we saw in the video, the reason why we're ranking candidates is in case our first choice is eliminated and our vote moves to that second choice or third choice or fourth choice. So just to remind folks how the counting process works, if you remember in the first round, all first choice votes are counted. If a candidate receives more than 50% of first choice votes, they are the winner. They win outright because it's not possible for any other candidate to get more votes than them. But if no candidate earns more than 50% of first choice votes, the counting begins in ranked choice voting rounds. At the start of every ranked choice voting round, the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated. They lose that round. If you rank that candidate as a voter, your vote will go to the next highest ranked candidate on your ballot. So if you ranked candidate D in this example as your first choice, that candidate had the fewest votes that round, they lost, your vote will be distributed to your second choice. And depending on who you are, you may have voted for candidate A, candidate B, or candidate C as your second choice. So that's why you see those arrows moving over. Um, we end up redistributing the votes um, to those candidates. 
in every round, you repeat that. So the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated. Anyone who voted for them, their vote moves to the next highest rank on their ballot. And the round continues until just two candidates are at the end. The candidate with the most votes wins. Um, if this sounds a little similar to you, it's because we used to use uh, runoff elections to, deter to determine the winner for citywide offices. Um, this is meant to kind of mimic a runoff election, except that you don't have to come back two weeks later and vote in another election. You just come and you vote in this one. And uh, it simulates the runoff process because you go down to the two most popular candidates based on everyone's ballots. And of course, the one with the highest votes, the highest number of votes wins. So I think you can probably guess what your number one reason to rank is, and it's that you have more say in who gets elected. And the reason why is because even if your top choice doesn't win, you can still help choose who does if your vote goes to your second, third, fourth, or fifth choice. That's pretty cool. Your vote will only go towards your second, third, fourth, or fifth choice if your first choice is eliminated. So there is no risk to ranking other candidates. Um, you want to rank as many candidates as you as you like or who you would think would be a good elected official as you can because you want to express your full preferences for the slate of candidates that are available to you. Um, so I always say this to voters, that doesn't mean that you should vote for candidates you don't like. Don't rank someone who you don't like. Your vote could end up with them if the candidates that you ranked before him or her are eliminated. So it's really important to rank the candidates who you like the most first, You're the candidate you like second, second, candidate you like third, third, and then it's okay if you don't have a fourth or a fifth, but consider ranking more than just one candidate to make sure that your ballot is active for the longest time. The second reason that you wanna rank is that you're hearing from more candidates. So you're learning more about them. You may not have had a second, third or fourth choice before ranked choice voting, before candidates uh, needed to talk about more issues to appeal to more voters. This is because they want your second choice. They want your third choice. They want your fourth and fifth choice even, not just your first choice votes. They're not only talking to the people that they know will automatically turn out to vote for them. They're talking about issues that matter to your community that maybe they wouldn't otherwise be talking to you about. So that's cool. And hopefully it means that you have uh, more preferences for who to elect. You have more ideas about which candidates uh, feel the same way that you do about the issues that are important to you. And the third reason to rank is that voters elect more diverse candidates. So in ranked choice voting cities, voters elect more diverse candidates that are more representative of the population that these elected officials serve. And I'm not making that up. Of course, this is part of the research that I alluded to earlier. Uh, Minneapolis elected its first two transgender council members in its first ranked choice voting election. Women make up more than 50% of the legislatures in seven cities that use ranked choice voting. Um, for context, our city council is only 25% female. And in the 13 largest municipalities that use ranked choice voting, six have women mayors and four have black, Latino, or Asian mayors. Um, so I think intuitively folks know that uh, in New York, we have diverse representation, but we can always do better, right? We've never had a woman mayor. We've only had uh, one black man as our mayor, and that's not super reflective of the city's diversity. So I think intuitively folks understand that, and it's a great reason to rank more candidates. Okay, the main takeaways and just some fun voter information that are related to the June primary. When can we expect to see results? So this is a question that I've been getting a lot because the media has been reporting on it recently. Um, we saw this last year too. Some results will not be known until about two weeks after the election. Um, and this isn't just because of ranked choice voting. Um, it's because of a really great reason uh, having to do with absentee ballots. So there were reforms to the way that absentee ballots were counted. Uh, we went from basically no one using absentee ballots to almost a quarter of voters using absentee ballots last year. Of course, that's due to COVID. <laughs> um, and it turns out that when folks used absentee ballots, they really liked them. Uh, you can vote from your home. You can take your time with your ballot. There are a lot of benefits to absentee voting. So 
Those reforms made sure that more absentee ballots would be considered valid and more votes would be counted for that reason. So those are good things. Um, but what it does mean is that because the Board of Elections can receive your absentee ballot up to seven days after the election, and you can fix certain errors that you make on your absentee ballot envelope, um, it takes a little longer for votes to be counted. For a ranked choice voting tabulation process to happen, it can happen super fast. A computer does that whole process that I explained to you, and it happens snap of a finger. Um, but it does require that all ballots be opened and counted. So of course we need to open all the absentee ballots before we tabulate all first choice votes, determine if a candidate has reached that 50% threshold or not. And then we know we need to run the ranked choice voting tabulation. So it's good to set expectations. Results may not be known for two weeks after the election. And I'm probably just, I'm just gonna say this up front for the mayor's race, the democratic primary, especially with this many candidates running, you're definitely not going to know the results until two weeks after. So set your expectations accordingly. <laughs> what that means for those of us in the election space is we get to keep talking about the election for another two weeks. No, it's good to know because then nobody's going to worry that something's wrong. This is normal. Yes, absolutely. That's a great point. Um, it's actually a great part of the process. Folks said, you know, they were upset that the absentee ballots weren't being counted. We had uh, folks who forgot to sign their ballot and that meant that it wouldn't be counted. That's not a problem anymore. Folks get to fix their mistakes and more ballots get to be counted. Uh, it's always a good thing. So what are those ballots gonna look like? Um, your ballot will probably be more than one page and it will probably have races on both sides of those pages. So remember to flip your ballot and remember to scan both pages if you're voting in person. If you're voting by absentee, remember to mark both sides of the page and remember to vote both pages. So <laughs> we're, entering, we're entering territory where there's a lot of candidates running and that just makes the ballot longer. So um, it's good to have more candidates and more choices, but this is something that's uh, just a little unusual is having a ballot that's list this long. I've probably said this 10 times <laughs> throughout this training, but just a few reminders. Um, you can rank up to five candidates, but you do not need to rank a total of five. You can rank three, you can rank one, rank four, rank two, it's up to you. However, you can only rank one candidate in each column. You can only rank one candidate for each choice on the ballot. Do not rank the same candidate more than once. And most importantly, if you make a mistake in person, you can always ask for another ballot. If you make a mistake on your absentee ballot, you can always call and ask for another ballot to be sent to you by the Board of Elections. So don't panic. This is all our first times using ranked choice voting. It's okay if you make a mistake and folks are there to help you out. So make sure you ask a poll worker for another ballot if you're voting in person. Okay, voter registration and absentee ballot deadlines that are fast approaching. Um, a reminder to folks, you are only eligible to vote in a primary election if the party that you're registered to is having an election. So if you're not registered to a party, if you're unaffiliated, then I am sorry to tell you that you cannot vote in the primary election. <laughs> Those are the rules in New York State. We have closed party primaries. However, um, if you want to register to vote for a future primary election and select a party, you can do so. It is past the date that you can do, choose to do that for this primary election. If you were not a registered voter and uh, you needed to register, the last day that you could do that was Mar uh, May 28th, which is of course past. So if you register now, you're eligible for the November general, but you also unfortunately cannot vote in this primary election. The last day to request your absentee ballot if you are a registered voter is June 15th, um, but there's no reason to wait. You can do it right now by going to nycabsentee.com. And then of course, the last day to return your absentee ballot is actually election day, June 22nd. So that's easy enough to remember. If you're planning on voting in person, um, you can choose to early vote from June 12th to the 20th. I have an exclamation point next to early voting because I love it so much. <laughs> Not least because early voting starts on my birthday this year. Um, <laughs> it's very exciting. <laughs> it's fitting. It's fitting. You're the expert. Exactly. Um, so early voting, 
it starts on a Saturday. There's two weekends of early voting. That means you can go and vote in person at a time that's most convenient to you. All of us work on Tuesdays for the most part. That means you can vote on a day that you don't have to think about how to fit it into your work schedule. There are two Saturdays and two Sundays of early voting this year, which is great. So it starts on Saturday, June 12th, and it ends on Sunday, June 20th. Um, if you're going to vote on election day, there's a lot of folks out there, out there that are just election day voters, which is totally fine. Vote on election day on June 22nd. Polls are open from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. And we're telling everyone to look up their poll sites before voting. Um, the reason why is because the Board of Elections recently opened a lot more polling sites, which is great. It means that your polling site may be closer to you than it was before. So make sure that you look up your poll site. Um, even if you voted in November, there are more sites this year. So look up your poll site at the Board of Elections website, findmypollsite.vote.nyc. And I did share um, those, those websites in the chat. And we will also, everyone who's here will be getting an email tomorrow. And we will include Perfect. there as well. So not to worry, we'll make sure you have them. Awesome. Thank you, Elizabeth. And if you are, you still have some questions about ranked choice voting, you want to explore it on your own, or you want to share information with your friends or family, um, you can go to the Campaign Finance Board's website. It's voting.nyc. We have information in English, Spanish, Chinese, Korean, and Bengali. And you can also follow us, follow us on social media at NYC Votes. Um, if, if your questions have not been answered by this training, <laughs> which is okay. Um, we're also gonna have a lot of outreach in uh, non-traditional places. So we're doing an advertising campaign on TV, radio, newspaper, the Staten Island Ferry, it's all over the place. Uh, we have a debates program, which is really cool. Uh, you can look up when the debate schedule is by going to voting.nyc. You should have received a postcard with ranked choice voting information and a voter guide, which is basically a magazine that tells you a little bit about every candidate that's running in your district. And they give us all that information and it's very fun to read. <laughs> um, the reason why is because it's in the candidate's own words, which is very cool. And then lastly, it's also online and the candidates have recorded a, I believe it's one or two minutes of a candidate statement. So you can see what they look like, what they sound like, um, and their most important policy proposals for the issues that you care about. Fantastic. All right, and that's finally over. <laughs> yeah, that's, Thank you so you much. so good at describing this and really making it very clear to everybody what it is. But still, you know, we want to, we want to address some questions because we want to make sure that everybody has their answers. And um, as I, there are no bad questions. So. One question we have um, was, what ballot scanner are used for ranked choice voting? Great question. So it's the same machine that we've used in the past. Uh, the ballots are going to look the same for the most part, except it's going to look like a grid for the ranked choice voting races. Um, and then as a voter, if for those of you who haven't gone to vote in person before, you receive your ballot from the poll worker you go and vote in what's called a privacy booth because your vote is private and independent in New York state and in this whole country. You mark your ballot and then you feed it into the ballot scanner. So it's truly with you the entire time. It maintains security of your ballot. Excellent. Peter wanted to know if you're registered to the independent party, can you vote in this election? So, if you are registered in the Independence Party, there is not currently an election for mayor, but I believe there is possibly a council race for the Independence Party. Um, and what I would recommend that you do in order to, to determine if there is a primary election for uh, that race is to look up your voter registration, make sure you are actually registered in the Independence Party still. Um, and then look up your sample ballot using that poll site locator that Elizabeth posted in the chat box. It's the um, find my poll site um, website and it'll show you a sample ballot for your exact district. 
I just shared again, um, look up your voter registration link and also the find your poll site registration link again. And as I mentioned, we will email it again to you tomorrow. So not to worry, we'll get you that all that information. Um, another question, Amanda wanted to know, will the ballot state when ranked choice voting does not apply? Well, will they say it? Yes. So the way it's gonna work is ranked choice ballots are going to be on the first page of your ballot and then there's going to be a whole nother page that has single choice races and it'll be very clear whether a race is a uh, rank choice or single choice you'll have a grid for rank choice elections and you'll have just a regular list of candidates with a single column for choosing for single choice ones why, another question, why doesn't New York State do ranked choice voting? Great question. So we had a ballot question that was approved by voters to use ranked choice voting in New York City. And this is getting into the weeds a little bit, but it uh, amended our city charter. So it didn't amend the New York State Constitution. It amended the equivalent of the city's constitution. So we can't tell New York State, <laughs> unfortunately, what to do. <laughs> and how to elect their um, their own representation at that level. But we can, as voters, decide to do that through a ballot question on the city charter. Okay, thank you. What What is the difference with early voting and is my poll site the same as my election day poll site? So your early voting poll site likely will be different from your election day poll site. And that's why we tell everyone to look up your poll site before you go to vote. It takes 10 seconds and it will give you your early voting poll site and your election day poll site, which is great. Um, and they likely will be different. Terrific, that's good to know. We also have a question in, along those lines as well is, can I drop off an absentee ballot at a poll site? Yes, this is something that the Board of Elections uh, rolled out last year. And um, they have these cute drop boxes. They're great um, for those of you who want to vote absentee in the privacy of your home, take some time with your ballot, but you don't want to buy stamps or put it in a mailbox. You want to make sure that they, the, it's directly delivered to the Board of Elections. Um, you can go to any poll site early or election day, and it does not need to be your assigned site. So on election day, we have 1,200 12, polling sites in all likelihood, there's one next to your job. There's one down the street from your kid's school. It may even be your kid's school. So um, it's important to know that if you want to drop your ballot off, you can do so at any poll site. If you're voting in person, you have to vote at your assigned site. Got it. That's a very good distinction to make for everybody. And along those lines of the absentee ballots, we have a question about how will it work when you're filling out your absentee ballot? Will it look the same as the ballots that you showed us in person? Yes, they will look the same. I have I have an absentee ballot right here. Um, so this is my ballot in Brooklyn. It's like I told you, two pages. <laughs> and it has races on both sides. So um, the good news is that uh, ranked choice voting and, uh, and single choice elections, if you're voting by absentee, it is exactly the same ballot as you will get in person. So you get the same experience. Um, of course, you're mailing your ballot off and the envelope gets opened by election officials. It's very secure, um, but you're not feeding it into the ballot scanner yourself. Terrific. We did, although we, we, we talked a little about it, we do have another question that came in about what happened to your second to fifth vote. So perhaps you can just touch upon that once again. Yes. So... Your vote only moves to your second choice if your first choice candidate loses a round. So if you are worried about ranking other candidates that it would harm your first choice, that won't happen. Um, it's only gonna move to your second choice if your first choice is eliminated. If you only rank one candidate, there's no place for your vote to move next. So that's why we keep telling folks, take a long look at the candidate list. Um, I'm sure that you have preferences uh, beyond just one candidate, 
who you super love. They're your first choice. Um, but you may have a second favorite or a third favorite. And in that case, you want to make sure that you're ranking um, your full ballot if you, if you feel comfortable or you want to do that, or ranking at least a second, a third candidate. It's good to know that even if you love, love, love your candidate, you're not hurting your candidate by voting for a second or third. It does nothing to hurt your favorite candidate who you voted for as first. Is that correct, Ali? Yeah, exactly. Um, and the interesting part of ranked choice voting is if you're, so you don't have to make that calculation of let me look at the polls. I heard that a couple of people that I know are voting for this person, but I don't really like him or her. Um, but I, I don't know if they're going to win. I don't know if my candidate's going to win. You don't have to make any of those decisions. Uh, you can vote for your favorite candidate, even if you don't think that they have a chance of winning. But again, we don't really know if they have a chance of winning because voters haven't voted yet. So I think something that folks always mention about ranked choice voting is they have a favorite candidate. Um, they don't have to think about whether or not they're likely to win. Um, they can just vote their true preferences. And I think there have been instances in the past, at least when I've voted, where I haven't voted for the candidate that I like the most because I was afraid of someone else winning instead who had more support. Um, but again, voters don't, Polls don't capture the full energy of, uh, of voting. And, and I think we've seen that the mayor's race in particular is really wide open. There are a ton of candidates running for city council and none of the po no polling has taken place on your city council level. So for that one especially, vote your true preferences, learn and do a little research on your candidates by going to the voter guide um, or by going to voting.nyc and meeting your candidates. Um, and just rank your ballot for your preferences. Your true, follow your heart <laughs> is actually what I've been telling people. <laughs> I love this. You really, now I, I feel that I really understand that you can go, you can follow your heart, you can give um, the number one to your favorite. And then you can also make sure that your vote continues to count if your favorite is not selected, you still get to be a part of the process which I think is an exciting thing and is very different about ranked choice voting um, where in the past, if you don't have ranked choice voting, you vote. And if your candidate loses, your vote's done basically. But now your vote right. continues to make a difference. And I think that's exciting. Yeah, and something that they've seen in, in other cities that use ranked choice voting is that voters feel more satisfied with the outcome of the election because if your first choice candidate loses, maybe your second choice ends up being the winner. In that case, you actually helped elect them. You chose them as your second choice. It's far preferable for your second choice to win than your no choice, the candidate who you didn't even put on the ballot because you don't like them at all. Um, so folks have more of a chance to be happy about the outcome of the election. And I think that's, that's probably the coolest part of ranked choice voting. I agree. I agree. I love that idea of, of still being able to be a part of the process and not just just because my first choice may not have won. Well, thank you, Allie. Thank you so much. This has been really very beneficial. Um, I mean, I really get it now and I hope that all of our attendees really get it. Um, but if you don't yet, it's okay. We um, have shared links with you where you can get more information. We also are recording this and it will be available to you. We will share the link with you tomorrow as well. So you can watch it again. Also, if you know anybody else who is confused, please share this with them. Your vote means so much. And we wanna make sure that everybody is voting and feels confident in how they're voting and understands the process. So Ali, thank you for making it so simple for us. And I really appreciate your expertise. And I wanted to thank all of our attendees for joining some of their evening with us. It's been wonderful to have you. And um, hopefully this was a benefit. And we look forward to seeing you on a future webinar. We want you all to stay safe, stay healthy, and go out and vote. <laughs> Thanks so much, Allie. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>